Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of A Gardener's Journey Homestead. I'm Barbara and today we're going to plant potatoes. And I got a, a few things to do in the greenhouse. So I, got, I need to plant some potatoes. My collard greens have bolted, which was a surprise to me. And then I also need to up pot some more seeds. So I'm going to take you along with me today as we hang out in the greenhouse and get some things done. Okay, so we're going to plant um, Yukon Gold potatoes today. And so I picked up some, well, first I ordered some from Urban Farmer online and I ordered two pounds. Now, I am new to this thing, right? And so I tried some red Pontiac potatoes last time in the greenhouse, but um, they didn't, it didn't work out. And I did some, some things wrong. So this is really like my first time trying again in the right time of the year. So. With all of that being said, I ordered um, two pounds from Urban Farmer and literally y'all got five potatoes, okay? So I was like, hmm, I didn't quite, I don't know when I was ordering online, didn't quite think that through two pounds, five potatoes. I don't know what I was thinking. But e anyway, I went and picked up some at my local co-op. Um, so I have Yukon Gold from the local co-op and I got two five pound bags and then I have the two pounds from Urban Farmer. So we're gonna plant those today. They're both Yukon um, Gold. The other thing that I didn't realize, and again, for all of you experts, you can just like pause for a minute or not listen. But for the new people who are um, learning along with me, um, when you do a potato, you get several potatoes from one potato. So I didn't know that either. So when I did two pounds, even though I only ordered two pounds and it was five potatoes, that multiplies into multiple potatoes. I did not know that, okay? And again, on this channel, I don't mind being vulnerable. And I know sometimes I just feel, I don't wanna say stupid, but I just, I mean, I'm, I don't know. So there are certain things that I know, certain things that I don't know, but that's what it's all about, right? And so um, for those of you that are new like me and you didn't know that either, hey, we're in the same boat together. Okay, so what I'm gonna do today is the last potatoes I did, I cut them in half right and let them kind of um callous or harden for 24 hours and put them in the ground but this time i'm actually going to plant them whole right and so i was watching another youtube tuber and they planted them whole and said they had a great yield even better than cutting them in half so that's what i'm going to try today because hey i'm not experienced at this i'm going to try it and we're going to see if we get potatoes okay so we're going to plant them whole and i'll take you along with me as we get started Okay, so this is the bed that we're gonna use. And um, in case you didn't realize, I am in the greenhouse. So we're gonna be planting these in the greenhouse in a raised bed. I was gonna plant them the other day, but you can see I have diatomaceous earth in here because when I got ready to plant and record, there was tons and tons of ants. So I've waited a couple of days to so hopefully they're all dead. I don't get bit. Ants and I do not get along. But the first thing um, is just, I've dug a trench as you can see here and so from what i have read and watched you want to plant your potatoes um three to five inches deep and about 10 or 12 inches apart and then about three um 36 inches between the rows so that's what i'm going to do you see i have a trench here you can kind of see that so i'm going to plant the potatoes whole um about 12 inches apart all the way down this trench and then i'm going to cover it with about three inches of soil or compost so i'm going to get started doing that and i'll come back Okay, I've done two rows. So I wanted to let you see. So basically you can see I have them about 12 inches apart and I just have them all the way going down the trench. I am going to cover them and I'm actually gonna dig a trench right there and make a third row. But my soil is piling up on the side. So I need to go ahead and cover these two rows. So that's why I wanted to stop and show you what it looks like. I'll go ahead and cover these with like three inches of soil and then top it with compost and um plant the third row and then we'll be all done just like that okay y'all the bed is finished so it's put back like nothing ever happened but we know that we did plant some potatoes so i have three rows there's probably 
12, um, about 12 um, potatoes in each row. Um, most of the potatoes were pretty small, so I felt good about um, planting them whole. There were a couple ones that were, you know, a medium size. I just went ahead and put them whole. I just had to dig it a little bit deeper. But I'll water this in, and then we're done with that. So the maturity date on um, the Yukon Gold potatoes is about 80 to 90 days. And so we'll see if we have potatoes. I'm hopeful that we will have potatoes. Absolutely. So what I did um, wrong the last time was um, I think I planted them too late. I got some from the co-op. No, I don't remember where I got them from. But anyway, I think I planted them too late. And the, the potatoes are more of a spring early crop versus sweet potatoes are a little bit later in the season and i know that i planted those red pontiacs even after sweet potatoes so i think one it got way too hot i did it in the ground um in my um greenhouse behind me and um i had leaves and sprout but it was hard to heal it up the right way so you know when you're doing potatoes again based on what i've read and seen you're once it starts to sprout you're supposed to kind of heal it up like put the dirt around it but y'all if you've planted potatoes before leave me some tips down below right let me know what i need to be thinking about that i'm not thinking about let me know if i'm on track if i'm off base but again one of the things um that i try to do on this channel is to just show you what i'm doing what i'm learning even when it doesn't work right because being a new gardener can be overwhelming it can be intimidating um, especially when you see all these youtubers um, that have been doing it a long time and they show you their lush harvest you know everybody didn't show you their bad stuff right my goal is to just show you what i do right and to show you the journey and the journey is the good the bad and the ugly right and so if for some reason these potatoes don't sprout or they don't they don't take off or they're small and not big it doesn't matter in the sense of I can try again I'll get more information I'll get more knowledge and so I always just want to encourage you right if you're in the same boat if you're new like me if you are newer than me right if you've been doing it longer than me there are points in this journey that you get frustrated there are points that you feel um, disappointed there's points where you feel like man I'm, it's in over my head it's too many things to remember to plant this deep and this long you know this many rows wide and all that I get it right but don't stop be encouraged right with the state of the world right now when you go into your local grocery store the shelves are bare right they're empty they're half full and so it is in our best interest to grow our own food right so if that means i have to spend three dollars and fifty cents on a five pound bag of potatoes from my local co-op and they don't make it then at least i've tried and i guarantee you the next time they will do better why because i have more information i have more knowledge i have people like you in this community that pour into me and give me tips all the time so i just wanted to pause for a moment and tell you to be encouraged okay so we have potatoes in the ground so now what we're going to do i'm going to take you and let you see my collard greens y'all when i came into literally things can change so fast i came into my greenhouse one day collard greens popping looking great then i came back literally two days later and i see all of these flower stems um <laughs> coming up and they're gone to seed so let me show you and we're going to figure out what we're going to do do y'all see my collard greens they're pretty, but they look like little broccoli for florets, right? These are my collard greens. You guys know we love collard greens, and I've been growing many of them. If you've seen some of my past garden tours, you've seen me talk about how they have done so well. We have harvested at least five times, but y'all look. They look like little broccoli going to seed, and it's all over. And I'm not really sure why like they're in the greenhouse look y'all all of them all of them all of them all of them so so what to do what to do what to do okay so i know that when i've had other vegetables go to seed like lettuce or whatever and try to eat it it's really 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 bitter right if you guys have had collard greens or any like your kale or anything like that go to seed um, let me know if you have tried to keep it, preserve it, cook it. Does it taste the same? Does it taste bitter? Let me know in the comments. Um, I don't have the heart yet to just get rid of all this, pull it up, and just say it's a loss. 
I don't have the heart for that, right? <laughs> now, I know for from experience that when I've done lettuce and it's bolted, it doesn't taste good. And I've just had to pull the whole thing up and go. And usually with lettuce, in my experience, it goes to see when it gets too hot, especially, you know, lettuce is mostly a cool weather crop. So I have had the experience where the summer comes on, it's outside in the raised bed, the temperatures spike really, really high, and the lettuce will go to seed, right? In the greenhouse, I thought my collard greens would be safe. And again, this is a, I haven't encountered this yet, so this is an ignorance on my part. Um, the greenhouse, you know, stays relatively, you know, a cool temperature. Now, are there days where it gets to be 70 outside and then if I don't come open up the greenhouse right away in the morning, is it 90 in here? Yeah, but that's been happening for the last two or three months and they haven't gone to seed. So I don't know if they're just like at the end of their cycle. Um, I don't know. I don't know if the day length has something to do with it. I truly don't know. I was truly, truly, truly surprised because I didn't expect it until I got it, unless it got really, really hot outside. So I got to figure out what I'm going to do. I think I'm going to try to harvest them and but then the thought of harvesting all of them washing them cutting them up and cooking them and they're epic fail that don't feel good either y'all it just doesn't but um i don't know what i'm gonna do i don't have the heart to just pull them up so y'all leave me some comments down here i think i'm gonna try to post this video tomorrow i want you guys to leave me some comments and then on sunday i'll come back out here that's only like two two or three days away so maybe what i will do is pick off some of the florets and flowers today and i read that that maybe could slow it down and then i'll post this get and do some more research now i did research before i came and did this video and what i saw was one i can take the florets and cook them i did see that I also saw that I could slow it down by picking the florets off and that the collards may not be bitter if I if it just happened, but they may not have as much flavor. I think I can take less flavor as long as they're not bitter. Anyway, so I wanted to show y'all that y'all help SOS, SOS, SOS. Put me some comments down below and tell me if you've experienced this, if it's going to be okay. It's like, do I pick it? Like just get it all and you know compost it all and throw it away or do i take my time and harvest it wash it clean it cut it up and then it don't taste good oh anyway okay so that's what we have going on i think i will like get some of the florets and harvest some of it and come back in 48 hours get some more information, education before I just pull it all up and then we'll go from there and I'll let you know what I did. So the next thing that we want to do um, today is up pot some more plants. So I posted a video a few days ago of me up potting some of my seeds. I have more to do. So I'll take you and show you what I'm doing. And then um, I think that'll wrap up the video for today unless I come up with something else and you never know. So you better stay tuned. Okay, so let's go do that and uh, we'll go from there. Okay, y'all, before we go do the seeds, so let me give you a close-up. Y'all, doesn't that look like, like broccolini? It looks just like broccoli um, or whatever. I think I'm at least going to try this and cook it and see what it tastes like. Yeah. Yeah. But what I wanted to show you that I didn't um, show you was, let me show you. Uh, remember, y'all, I planted, um, if you've been watching my garden tours, I planted more collard greens back in December. And remember on that video, I said, hey i'm in the greenhouse it's gonna stay a certain temperature can i go ahead and plant collard greens not really sure well remember i did so i guess you could call that succession planting so even um if these collard greens that have gone to seed like this are not good um and again even if i cook them and they taste okay i'm assuming they're not going to bear more leaves but i have another whole row that i planted in december that is coming along so yay me um, so I may still have collard greens, you know, for the next, I don't know, 60 days or so. They're small. They're not big as these yet, but let me show you what those look like. Okay. You guys, you can see these are the collard greens that I planted in December. That was a pretty, it's getting on up there, but this whole row is mostly collard greens. So I do have some more coming in for sure. And then on further up is my kale you can see the kale there and that has really like taken off just even in the past week or so so i do have kale 
a row of kale and collards that I planted in December that's coming up. So um, even if these are done, I may still have some. So that's a good thing. Okay, guys, so I got to up pot some more um, stuff. So remember a few days ago, I, I posted a video about me up potting. And then also remember on that same video, I planted some flowers. So that was just four days ago. So let me show you if you can see that the flowers, the zinnias have already started to germinate. Yay, yay, yay. So just in about three days, they've started to germinate. So as you can see, this tray is empty on the back side because remember I planted some, um, I started some zinnia seeds, that's those, and they're already germinating. But also in that same tray, I had stuff that I had already been grown and germinated. And so I separated it because I wanted to put these on the heat mat um, and let them germinate with the dome on. And so that's why I separated it. Um, so I would just have plants in there that, or seeds that were new. But now, I, now that they've germinated, I can add some other plants in there that's already germinated so that I can put them all under light. So that's what I'm doing today. So remember this tray from the other day and remember this is the plug tray it's 144 and remember i was having a hard time getting the things out one of the viewers told me to try a spoon um which i forgot to bring a spoon down here but um also I, there some of them are dry and not as moist so i'm thinking it'll be easier to pop out but y'all remember i have romaine lettuce and cabbage but then i have peppers coming up too so I'm gonna try to up pot some of those. These are the last of my two inch pots. So I'm gonna fill these up in the tray and up pot and then my tray will be complete. No empty spots and all will be well. Guys, I am done. So I have a row. Let me see if I can turn it around this way. I have a row of red bell peppers that I up potted. That's in the front. And then the second row is romaine lettuce. So I got that done. I still have this many plants left that still need to be up potted. Um, I have 14 of these left but the tray they go on is at the house. So I'll probably just up pot these tomorrow because it's gonna be hard for me to take individual pots and it's gonna be too cool tonight to stay in the greenhouse. So here we go again. You can see the bell peppers right there that were in the little 44, 144 cell. And then you can see the romaine lettuce and then in the back are the flowers that we seeded on Sunday. So. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. We planted potatoes. We looked at my collard greens. Uh, we planted potatoes. We looked at my collard greens. We up potted some stuff. We still have more to up pot. I'm glad that I only did one of these, okay? 144, that's a lot to up pot. And that's a lot of pot. So I'm glad I only did one tray, but you know, you live and you learn. And again, if you're doing it production style, that comes in really, really handy, right? So anyway, thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. Remember, gardening is a journey. Let's grow together. I'll see you next time.